Hello everyone, welcome to Kalpa Vriksha. Today with us we have advocate Shiv Kumar who has been practicing law for 50 years. He is a mediator at the Bangalore Mediation Center since 2007. He is also a master trainer at the Bangalore Mediation Center. He does private mediation. He is also a conciliator and a mediator in commercial disputes. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you. Today we are discussing about conciliation. We will get to know from Advocate Sir as to what is conciliation, what are its processes and does law recognize conciliation? Thank you for having me over. Before we get to talk about conciliation as a process, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes explaining to you this whole conflict, concept of conflict. Way back in the days when kings were ruling these kingdoms, I'm sure you're aware that justice used to be meted out on the basis of dharma. The kings relied on the concept of dharma. Yeah. Sometime thereafter, society changed and we began to realize that our rights were more important and therefore the focus shifted to rights. If you also remember that in the old days, there was the joint family system, the Hindu undivided family systems where the karta, rightly or wrongly, was the head of the family. Whatever decisions he gave in respect of any conflict or dispute was the law. Mm -hmm. Now society began to question that and say, what is this authority that is vested in you to deliver judgments and uh, decide on what's good for me and what's not. So there was a mindset change. When that happened, the uh, focus shifted to rights. We became a rights-oriented society and therefore the courts stepped in. And as a result, when the focus shifted to rights, the number of disputes, the number of conflicts, the number of cases exponentially increased. Therefore, it was found that even the court system, which is the adjudicatory system of determining right and wrong, was inadequate. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in the year 2016, when this clamor by disputants began, namely questioning the rights of a third person to determine what's good or what's not good for me, we thought of two specific alternate dispute resolution mechanisms. One was mediation and one was conciliation. And therefore, in the year 2004, uh, mediation was introduced into India. It's an American-based concept. And I'm sure in the earlier uh, uh, videos, there's been enough information on the mediation process. Conciliation was introduced in the year 2016 under the Arbitration and Conciliation Act. Okay. So the whole process has shifted from focus from the courts to a process which gives the persons in conflict a right to decide what's good for them and what's not good for them. This is very briefly the history of conflict in the development of the ADR, the alternate dispute resolution process. Now conciliation under the Arbitration and Conciliation Act is a statutorily recognized process. Okay. Mediation is also recognized, but we do not have a separate individual statute for mediation unlike the conciliation, which is provided for under the Arbitration Conciliation Act. Now, as opposed to the judicial system or arbitration system, which are both adversarial in nature, both conciliation and mediation provides a platform for a dialogue. It is a platform where there is no right or wrong. There are no accusations of right and wrong. There is no vindication of a right or compensating the person who has been wronged. Both conciliation and mediation are based on a platform of both parties entering into a dialogue, understanding each other, understanding the needs of each other, appreciating the needs of each other, recognizing that there may be two or more people or two or more views, contrarian views in a given situation, and trying to harmonize them. So the whole process is based on dialogue. And the role of a conciliator there is to see whether there is, there can be a congenial platform for dialogue. That is the essence of the conciliation process. Okay. That we need not be standing fighting against each other. We can collaborate. We can move together, together. to resolve a dispute or a problem. It becomes so simple this it way. Becomes, no, it, it becomes simple in the sense that you are not standing fighting each other. Fighting, yeah, that's true. All parties to a dispute are moving together in tandem, in, in a collaborative mood, to see whether the the, the conflict can be resolved. Mm -hmm. And one of the fundamentals of conciliation process actually is that um, we do not accuse a person of being the problem. 
we follow the very, um, very salutary principle of saying we separate the people from the problem. Okay. So what the conciliator does is to separate the person, focus and identify the problem, and try and focus on a resolution of the problem. That is actually in very brief, the whole process. But if you get into the details, it's a very, it's a very fascinating process of, um, of dialogue and communication. But the law recognizes it. And if a settlement is reached in the course of uh, the conciliation process, it becomes equal into a degree of a court. So the net net the result is we have bypassed the entire provisions of the justice delivery system and you're in for an executable degree of a court. Okay. That's what happens. And we need the uh, consent of the parties to get into a conciliation? Actually, since both mediation and conciliation are uh, alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, yeah. consent is the fundamental requirement. Consent. You cannot compel right, a right. party or two parties to either enter into mediation or into conciliation at all. Okay. And uh, the beauty of it is that if at some point along the way, the parties feel that they do not want to participate either in the conciliation or mediation, they are free to withdraw. It's what we call a party-centric process. It's a voluntary process. Voluntary. It recognizes the principle of uh, self-autonomy, party autonomy, okay. unlike a court. Now, if you were to withdraw in a court or in an arbitration, there is bound to be an adverse consequence that results from that withdrawal. Mediation has no such consequence. Conciliation has no such consequence. Mm -hmm. Consent is necessary. Consent. Yes. See, in a court or an arbitration, law vests in the arbitrator or in the judge, the authority to pronounce a judgment. In mediation or in conciliation, the authorities to the limited extent that both parties authorize you to intervene and see whether the dispute can be resolved. Okay. Beyond that, we have no authority at all. Okay. That's how it works. Okay. That's nice. So can uh, any party approach for pre-litigation conciliation before going to the court of law? Yes, certainly. In fact, uh, pre-litigation mediation also exists. Pre-litigation conciliation, conciliation also exists. Okay. Okay. A dispute need not wait to be manifested in a court of law. Court. All right. If that happens, then it becomes what is called a court annexed mediation, which is what the Bangalore Mediation Center does. Mm -hmm. Cases that are pending in a court are re referred to the Bangalore Mediation Center. And as long as the case is pending, mediation can go on. Go on. And then it goes back to the court if it is resolved. Okay. But the beauty of conciliation is that the moment there's a difference mm -hmm. or a moment there's a dispute, you can approach a conciliator in whom you have confidence to try and intervene, create a platform for a dialogue and see whether we could resolve the dispute without going into a court of law. Yes, certainly it's possible. And that's what's happening nowadays okay. in the justice system. Most of them are, I think, uh, opting for mediation conciliation. Yes, they are, because one realizes the pitfalls of the litigative process. Yes. It's a long process. Yes. Yeah. Long process, uncertainty. Yes, uncertainty. And expensive. Expensive. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Yeah. So are there any special techniques when it comes to con conciliation? Conciliation and mediation are of the same techniques, same. Okay? Mm -hmm. namely communication. Okay. The mediator or the conciliator has to be trained in communication, people skills. Mm -hmm. In other words, you, a mediator or a conciliator has to understand human nature. Right. He has to understand the nuances of human nature. He has to understand and accept that there is a contrarian view possible. Very succinctly we say in our conciliatory language, we say a conciliator must understand that this also is rather than this ought to be. So we recognize the ex that's right. We recognize the existence of contrarian views and try and harmonize these and move together in a collaborative mode to resolution. Those are the techniques, communication techniques, understanding human nature, understanding reactions, understanding responses, and most important, being empathetic. These are the techniques that are essential to a conciliator. So how long does this whole thing take, the conciliation? Is there a, is it time bound or it depends on the parties and how, how quickly they want to conciliate? There have been conciliations that have ended in one day successfully. Right. But right. there have also been conciliations that go on for a week, 10 days. Right. It's entirely dependent on the parties. Okay. They okay. determine. They are the stakeholders and they determine. Right, right. 
So uh, it, it was nice talking to you about conciliation. You gave us a very great explanation and, and very uh, a simple explanation on what is conciliation where every one of us can understand. Now, uh, what I learned is to approach court, we uh, need an advocate. Uh, but uh, what is the cost involved here in uh, conciliation? Technically, under the law, you don't need an advocate to approach court. court. But the uh, technicalities of the law are so immense that you really do need the advocate. Right. And taking off from there, we also need to realize that once you engage an advocate in a court of law, you have a third person between you and the judge. There is an interim person there. So there are three people. There are litigants, there is a lawyer, and there is a judge. And the judge will ultimately determine what is right and what is wrong. So you necessarily need to advocate, engage an advocate. advocate. Conciliation or mediation is a party-centric process. Okay. Primarily, we look at parties. We do need advocates, but we can do without them. Okay. And therefore, since it's a party-centric process, we look, talk directly to the parties, converse with them, have a dialogue with them, because most often they are unable to vocalize what they want and what they desire. And that is what a conciliator does in understanding the needs, the interests of the persons through the process of communication. Okay. Cost, it varies from person to person. There are people who do pro bono conciliation. Right. So there is no fixed cost for conciliation. Okay. It's dependent upon the parties. Party. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. We've learned a lot about conciliation today. We will meet again soon. Thank you. Thank Keep you watching Kalpavruksha and the next episodes of Kalpavruksha. Thank you.